astonishing speech from a Democrat uh, talking about progress and the fight for a patronage system. We'll go next to Kunetim, if, if I may. Um, you are the part of the Progressive Party, the Move Forward Party that has, uh, that of course, uh, a lot of people were expecting to be government uh, initially after the election, but then now, now this. So, what's your view, sir? Yep. So, um, firstly, I want to thank the FCCT for um, having me here today. Uh, it'd be a very refreshing uh, panel uh, to hear opinions from um, all of you as well as uh, fellow panelists as well. I won't begin by talking too much into what has happened in the past. I think uh, that has pr probably been quite clear to all of you already, um, although happy to answer any questions you may have about uh, what happened during the government formation uh, process. But I want to just um, start off by uh, recapping about where we are today and what are the potential challenges that we might see going into the future. I think uh, what is now clear is that we are in, in an era of a new government. But whether that new government will lead us to a new Thailand, I think remains to be seen. I think if you want to catch uh, glimpses of what the future of Thailand looks like, there are probably about four important documents or four important milestones that you can uh, evaluate and study. Uh, two, two of which uh, I think we are already, have already seen or are already starting to see. The first one, of course, is the policy statement that was presented to parliament uh, across uh, two days, um, across Monday and Tuesday. The second document, I think, or the second uh, piece of evidence um, are the cabinet resolutions that will soon be, be coming up. Mm -hmm. I think we saw glimpses of the first week cabinet meetings resolutions being um, released uh, through the press uh, throughout today. But I think for the first few weeks, I think you know, what cabinet decides to do, I think will, will very much set the tone for what will happen going into the future. Uh, the third important um, piece of evidence is something which I think is quite new and was mentioned by the Prime Minister in his closing speech yesterday, is that he is committed uh, to Parliament that he will get all the ministries to come up with a clear action plan, with mm. clear time frame uh, to answer questions that many members of Parliament had about his policy. So I think hopefully that will be made public um, so that the people can uh, evaluate and ask further questions regarding the details of the policies. And I think the fourth piece of document which will be important uh, will be the budget uh, that will be presented to Parliament uh, in what I believe will now be in January, uh, which is quite a few months late, or a few months later than what would normally be expected. But that's, of course, because the new government um, uh, took quite a while uh, to get into place, so that's understandable. So I think for me, those are the four important pieces of evidence uh, which I think we can all use to assess what the new Thailand uh, or what the future of Thailand would look like. Now, having um, studied and assessed uh, the policy statement in detail, um, as well as uh, looking at the first set of cabinet resolutions that have come out today, I think um, initially I have two broad concerns that I want to share in this kind of opening uh, remark. Uh, the first concern that I have is that it seems that the direction of this government is rather unclear. Um, and I think there are a lot of details missing uh, that would provide that clarity to people to see what the next four years would look like. The evidence I have for this is actually the policy statement, uh, which is actually in front of me here today. Uh, it consists of about 14 pages of what the government wants to do um, with the country over the next four years. Uh, this document is a very important piece of, um, um, piece of document because it is a social contract that the government uh, is providing or is giving to the public about what it wants to do. I think upon uh, quite detailed assessment, we noticed that there are, there are many things missing that we hoped would have been in there that would have provided the clarity that I think the public uh, would have wanted to see. I'll give you five examples. The first one that I think is missing is um, targets which we can use to measure uh, the success of this government's policy. Uh, if we look at Per Thai, which is the, the main party in the government and their campaigns during the election, we see that they have often uh, talked about a target of growing the economy by 5% per year. Right? Whether you think that's achievable or not, I think that remain, that's, uh, that's everyone's right. But at least they were very clear about where they wanted to take the country. Uh, that target is actually missing from this uh, policy document. And in this document, there are no specific uh, indicators or KPIs which they have committed, which we can use to measure the success of the next four years. 
The second uh, information that's missing are the numbers uh, that back up different policies. So for example, we saw in the election campaign, uh, per Thai, uh, the main party in the government were very clear about a lot of policies and the numbers behind it. They were very clear that they wanted to increase minimum wage to 600 baht uh, per day uh, by, the end of, um, uh, by, by the end of the government term or by, within four years. They were very, very clear that they wanted to increase uh, the salary for uh, graduates to 25,000 baht uh, per month. But if you look in this um, policy statement, you will see that those numbers are not present at all. It only talks about broad sentences saying that they will try to increase the minimum wage and salary to a, a reasonable level or to a level that is in line with the cost of living. So there's a lack of commitment in the numbers behind their policies. And this is quite unusual, especially if you compare to the previous Per Thai government, which I think Kun Surinan can, can share more about, <laughs> where actually in their policy statement, they committed very clearly, uh, which is according to what their campaign before, uh, that they would uh, try to raise minimum wage to 300 baht um, and, um, and were clear about putting the numbers behind that policy. I think the third uh, in, uh, information, piece of information that's missing is an action plan. So for example, it talks broadly uh, about uh, understanding the issues relating to the constitution. But it's, it doesn't talk about the details or it doesn't lay out the details as to how they would try to resolve that issue. So despite the campaign being you know, heavily uh, uh, revolved around the idea of having an elected constitutional um, drafting assembly uh, being um, set in place to draft a new constitution. Even a mention, even a mention of that constitution drafting assembly is missing from this government. Mm. The fourth one is the time frame. So normally governments would divide their policies into you know, urgent policies that need to be done immediately and policies that would be done across the four years. But normally they would put quite a clear time frame as to what they mean by urgent policies. So for example, to refer back to the previous Per Thai government, they were very clear that for the urgent policies that they laid out, these were expected to be completed within one year. In this current policy statement, it divides policies into three time frames, so short term, medium term, and long term. But there are no specific details as to how many years, how many days, how many months are to be used to measure what we define as short term, medium term, long term. And I think finally, the fifth um, observation I have, uh, fifth piece of information that is missing from this document, are some of the highlight uh, policy, uh, pol are some of the key policies that were used during the election campaign. So for example, um, Per Thai talked a lot about uh, moving towards um, a system where we have elected governors in some of the provinces of the 77 provinces in Thailand. That's missing from this document. Um, per Thai talked a lot about the uh, um, soft power or creative economy policies. Some of them were in here. But one notable uh, missing policy is the idea to set up what they call TACA, which is a new agency to try and coordinate and support um, uh, creative workers in the creative industry. So I think all in all, those are just kind of quick um, examples of what is missing from this policy statement, which I think backs up my first observation that the direction of this not new government is quite unclear. And I think for me, the cause uh, behind this I think it's because this government is a coalition of many parties uh, who have had um, quite uh, tangible and substantial differences in political ideology and policies over the past four years. And they probably have not had enough time to discuss among themselves and agree on the compromises that needed to be made. And hence, you know, when the deadline's up and they need to present a policy to parliament, they had to come up with very broad statements to make sure that you know, it covers or it is in a statement that all parties who may have differences in their policy stance and political stance can at least accept it as government policy. So I think that's the first uh, of the two observations that I have. Uh, the second um, key observation that I have is that what is at least partially clear uh, in this policy statement I think is still quite worrying given the challenges that Thailand is facing. I summarize into four key challenges and as to why I feel that the current set of policies may not be able to solve those four key challenges. The first challenge, I think, is to do with short-term economic recovery. So trying to, to stimulate the economy uh, and inject some growth into the economy to increase people's incomes and you know, ensure that they are relieved of the economic hardship that has uh, lingered uh, since the COVID period. I think on this 
first challenge, I have two broad concerns, and we can go into details later. I think the first concern I have is that it seems that the government's short-term solution uh, to fix the economy is pretty much putting all eggs in one basket to this 10,000 baht uh, handouts via digital wallet. I mean, p uh, move, for move Forward Party has a lot of concerns regarding this policy. Uh, we have concerns about whether it's necessary to have such a large package uh, to, sti to stimulate the, econ the economy uh, at this current time, or whether actually the package can be uh, more targeted towards groups that are really um, stuck struggling. We also have concerns about whether the impact of this policy is overestimated uh, by uh, the government, given their forecast of what the fiscal multiplier would look like. We have concerns about the conditions of the package uh, regarding you know, the four kilometer per perimeter or this condition uh, where uh, the person who received the, the money from digital wallet may not be able to spend uh, in all areas, but is you know, limited to uh, a perimeter of four kilometers or more uh, in there uh, that is close to where they're registered um, uh, in terms of their address. And we have, con we have concerns as well regarding the technology behind this uh, package because if the government insists on using blockchain to back up this package or this uh, mechanism, uh, that could take quite a while and may not be in time uh, to, to get the quick term, uh, or the, to, to, to quickly inject the economy as they had hoped. And I think finally we have concerns about the budget that is needed for this uh, policy. Uh, if we look at the numbers, it will require about five, 560 billion baht, which is pretty much taking out the whole of what is about more than half of what is left in the, in the budget. I mean, Thailand's annual budget is about three million, sorry, three tr trillion baht. Uh, if you take out what is normally, what has to be, what have to be spent uh, every year, for example, like salaries or welfare that is committed to the public, you get about one, one trillion baht left. So this is much taking about half of that already, right? So it's eating into um, other um, resources that could be used uh, for other projects, for example. The second concern I have with this challenge is that um, some of the other policies seem to be um, falling into the uh, economics of taking from the left pocket and giving to the right pocket. So for example today, I think we had good news from the cabinet meeting that they will reduce the, uh, the cost or the price of electricity and diesel. Um, but I think this is being subsidized by essentially um, government budget. So unless they, they will try to um, reform the structure of our electricity market to try and ensure there's net metering, to ensure that there's uh, fair pricing, to ensure that you know, we try to liberalize the electricity market. Unless these structural reforms are made, then eventually this is pretty much using tomorrow's money to pay for today's bills. Mm -hmm. right. So I think that those are my two concerns regarding the first challenge. The second challenge that I have concerns about is regarding economic competitiveness. So apart from fixing the economy in the short term, how do we ensure that our economic structure is more competitive than it has been? Right? And I think the two key policies that I've been monitoring and soon, I'm still not convinced by this current government stance is regarding education and decentralization. We know that a key to uh, an e uh, economy's competitiveness is the, the quality of education. We know that Thailand's um, education system uh, has been heavily criticized regarding its quality. Uh, students in Thailand spend the longest hours in school compared to the rest of the world. But when we look at the outcome regarding the skills, whether it's mathematics, science, reading skills, we are still in the bottom half of the table uh, when if we refer to the PISA evaluation. So we know that at least one thing that needs to be made to reform the education system is to rewrite a curriculum, mm -hmm. to be more competency-based, to be less about you know, injecting heavy, heavy amounts of content to a student, but more geared towards um, trying to uh, foster the development of critical skills that are needed for the future, whether critical thinking, communications, teamwork, and empathy. The commitment to uh, write a new curriculum is missing from this policy statement as well. The second um, example I have on competitiveness is decentralization. We know that this is one of the agenda that I believe actually the Democrat Party and Move Forward, pa Move Forward Party I think are quite aligned in trying to, to push ahead. Um, and you know, apart from trying to push for election of uh, governors in different provinces in Thailand. We also want to see the budget be more fairly allocated between the central government and local governments. To give you an example, right now if you're in Thailand and you pay 100 baht in tax, 80 baht goes to the central government. Only 20 baht is left that is shared by local administrations that are elected by uh, the people in different areas across the country. If you compare to countries like Japan, 
uh, where they have been quite successful with decentralization, the ratio is 60 to 40. So if you pay 100 yen uh, in tax in Japan, six, 60 goes to the central government, and you have about 40, which is quite a sizable proportion that is shared amongst uh, local administrations. And we believe that you know, decentralizing uh, resources, decentralizing power will be the key to try and improve the competitiveness of Thailand's economy and ensure that the economic development is more widely spread and more fairly and evenly spread amongst different geographical areas. The third challenge um, that I want to mention about is on the inequality. And I think here there's a fundamental difference in ideology between the Per Thai-led government and Move Forward where I think Per Thai-led government has been quite insistent that their vision of the economy is one of trickle-down economics, where they will try and grow the size of the cake first, and then that cake wouldn't be large enough to be evenly spread and trying to reduce inequality. Whereas for Move, move Forward Party, we see the need to actually fix the inequality issue in parallel with economic growth. And we believe that with the trends that we are seeing, whether technology replacing jobs, whether aging society, the crisis of inequality is only just going to get worse if we don't do anything about it. So that's why we've been quite insistent that uh, the welfare programs that, that are currently in place in Thailand, whether the elderly benefits or the um, early child benefits, should be expanded. And that is, I think, going into opposite directions of what this government uh, is potentially uh, doing. I think we saw, uh, actually even before Kunseta took office, we saw a release of a, a document from um, the Ministry of Interior that actually provides a loophole that could allow for the elderly benefits that are currently given to uh, every elderly person on a universal basis actually be changed to a more targeted uh, system, which actually could result in some um, of the um, elderly people that are actually um, in low-income families being excluded unintentionally uh, from this um, program via ineffective means testing uh, mechanisms. Um, and I think finally, the issue um, that I think a lot of people have pointed out over the past couple of days is on the challenge of democratization. Um, I think uh, given the context of how this government came about, I think Move Forward Party is quite concerned on whether this government will be insistent uh, in pushing through these um, needed, uh, much needed democratization reforms that may go against uh, the political ideology or the political stance of their coalition um, parties. I think to summarize into three key examples. Number one, the drafting of a new constitution by an elected uh, constitution drafting assembly. I think this was one issue where Per Thai and Move Forward Party were very much aligned during the election and across the four years of parliament beforehand. But right now, even though Per Thai's uh, minister yesterday confirmed to me in parliament that he still has his target in mind, uh, he mentioned that there is a challenge on whether this um, political project will be accepted um, or agreed with by other coalition parties. The second uh, example is on military reform. It's actually quite historic that we, are now, we now have um, the first ever uh, non-military or civilian uh, ministry of um, defense who is not the prime minister. Right? So on the surface, that seems like a very much a, a progressive symbol that we might have um, finally the Thai military under civilian control as it should be under democratic standards. But what we have seen, at least early indicators of what we are seeing, is that it seems that um, the government is finding it difficult to push through their own ideas and inject their own ideas into reforming the military. And most of the policies that were announced were mainly uh, con a continuation of the proposals or policies that were thought up by the military, by the military um, beforehand. So for example, reducing the target of Im eliminating conscription to simply reducing the number of people being conscripted, or a lack of commitment in terms of amending um, a law related to uh, the Ministry of Defense, which currently gives the military, uh, we call it the military parliament, or in Thai we call it Sapakala Home, power over the Ministry of Defense, in the sense that there is a law that currently says that uh, any decision related to military policy or military budget has to be um, according to the, the resolution or the verdict of the military parliament that is pretty much made up of senior military personnel and very little representatives of the civilian government. So in a sense, if we don't amend that law, uh, even though we have a civilian minister in charge, he will not be able to make the decisions regarding military policy. And the final one is on demonopolization. 
um, I think uh, we are seeing at the moment not enough commitment in terms of trying to uh, tackle the issue of monopolies and oligopolies in Thailand and ensure we have free and fair competition. Um, I think one key test that we will see with this government is that Move Forward, pa Move Forward Party has submitted a law to, to try to reform the Competition Commission to ensure that that commission is in better shape and more effective at trying to break up monopolies and ensure free and fair competition. So I think it remains to be seen uh, where uh, Per Thai and the other coalition parties will stand on that. And I think when I talk about these three examples, right, democratization via new constitution, demilitarization, and demonopolization, I think I want to end uh, my, my first round by saying that um, I think my concern is visualized by the fact that if you look at the first groups of people that the Prime Minister met with, they are pretty much the people that would lose out from these three key pieces of agenda. So you saw that he met with General Prayut, who was behind the drafting of this uh, constitution that we are currently uh, uh, living under. Uh, he met with army chiefs, um, who, I mean, they may have ideas of their own about how to reform the military, but I think it remains to be seen whether the, the civilian government can inject their own ideas to add to that. And I think thirdly, um, he met with um, pretty much the, the business leaders or the leaders of the big conglomerates in Thailand who may have concerns about some of, of the demonopolization um, agenda the Move Forward Party is pushing. So I think it remains to be seen on whether this overall democratization agenda, whether it's constitutional reform, uh, military reform, or um, uh, demonopolization will be something that this government will, will push ahead. So I think just to end on that note, yep, I think uh, overall in one sentence we see that the direction is quite unclear given the nature of this coalition government and what is clear is still quite concerning. Thank you, Captain Tim. Very. Look, clip, stop. Now, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.